one of the mothers got up after I had uh, given my speech and said, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for my girl's life. She had, her father was a diabetic, and uh, she had inherited type 1 diabetes, and she couldn't have lived without our products. It's often stated that the cotton textile, mining, or quarry industries are the oldest in the world. Mining, for example, can be traced back to the first use of tools by humans. Textile industries grew up around the invention of wheels and looms. There is evidence of cheese making in Poland, circa 5500 BCE. But one industry often gets forgotten in mention of our first professions as humans, the study of urine. But before we started making cheese, we wondered if looking at what comes out of our bodies might help explain what is going on inside of it. Going back 6,000 years BC, there is evidence of urine testing. Uh, it's just really exciting. That happened in the Western Asia area called Mesopotamia. So they've got clay tablets that document studying urine. But it's been going on through the ages. Now, you know, trying to figure out 6,000 BC, oh, you say that's old. But I, I always love trying to put it in context in the sense that, okay, um, those of you that might be familiar with Stonehenge, you know, that ancient stone structure in England, well, that got started at 3000 BC. So your analysis testing was 3000 years even before those that civilization was building Stonehenge. Then if you think of the Bible or Father Abraham of the great religions, he lived around 2200 BC. So all these years, your analysis has been going on and on and on. Hippocrates in ancient Greece, the father of modern medicine, it was Hippocrates who said that no other system in the body gives as much information as the urine excreted by the kidneys. In the second century was the first time that people started to speak of diabetes. Another word from the Greek will spare you the, the meanings, but the point is urine was actually sweet because glucose wasn't being processed properly by the body and therefore passing into the urine. In the early days of urinalysis, ants were attracted to urine. 
and uh, particularly if it had glucose in it, and it, because it was sweet. And in fact, diabetes mellitus means sweet pea. People tasted urine for the standpoint that, again, just like the ants, the uh, urine, uh, if somebody that's diabetic, is sweet. And if they had a malady and you could correlate that with some kind of you know, factor like taste or smell, then you could know that that would give you an idea that this, this person has some kind of ailment. One of the things about urinalysis and actually tasting urine, up until the 70s, that was one of the things that they did in medical school, is they had the medical students actually taste their own urine. Of course, they didn't see that the, the professor didn't test his, but he told them to put their finger into the cup and put it in their mouth, and they did. And they didn't realize that he hadn't really done it. So, um Urine testing, tasting, uh, studying has been going on through through the centuries. It really became uh, more, I think, popular or prevalent in the Middle Ages, where your early physicians would use the urine color and clarity. Can you see through it? Is it cloudy? Does it smell? Is there an odor? And all of these things were crude indicators of a variety of disease processes. Throughout time, the use of urine has been a prominent part of the human experience. The ancient Romans and Greeks used it as a teeth whitener. This practice was so prevalent that those who sold pee collected from public urinals were charged a tax. Animal hides were soaked in urine to make leather soft. Urine is a rich source of urea. When urea decays, it breaks down into ammonia. When added to water, it creates a weak base with a high pH, which breaks down the organic material, making tanning the hide easier. Many early European launderers preferred urine to soap. The ammonia generated by urine was able to get tough stains out of cloth. In ancient Rome, urine collection vessels were common on streets, so passers-by could relieve themselves. These vessels were then taken to a local laundry known as a felonica, where workers would stomp on clothes in a tub of urine. Well into the Middle Ages, urine was a reigning medical tool of the day. The practice of uroscopy, as it was known at the time, was so prevalent that the metula, the glass bottle used to collect urine samples, was the symbol for doctor. Anyone practicing medicine hung out a sign with a metula to indicate they were practicing medical professionals. In the Middle Ages, physicians made quite a show of examining urine. They were in the long robes. Those physicians would hold up the metula and make it quite a prophecy of what they saw and what their judgment was on your urine. They would pass judgment on your state of health. This whole show really impressed the patients and instilled in the patients a great deal of trust and confidence in their physicians. You can imagine with long robes and people being so much part of a show and patients being just so impressed, other people are gonna get in on that act. Fast forward to the 1400s. Now all of a sudden we're middle ages and the alchemists have arrived on the scene. Oh my goodness, did they have some procedures for us. They're leeching, they're purging, they're bloodletting, they're doing all kinds of things, uh, and urine starts to take a little bit of a hit that people think the show's getting a little off the mark, a little straining past credibility. The problem came as that uh, Renaissance time period uh, went on. There were individuals that um, were you know, just looking at the urine and not even addressing the patient. They'd say, just send the urine, I'll tell you what's wrong with you. Kind of tomfoolery in essence. And so it kind of fell out of favor with your true physicians. Back on the literary scene, believe it or not, urine is making its way into popular culture, which in the day was not movies and CDs. In the day, popular culture was literature. Did you know urine is in the works of Shakespeare, Machiavelli, and Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. By the 1600s, urine 
examination is out of control. People are predicting all kinds of things. There was a brief period in history where uh, people in uh, authority or power would use urine to diagnose or identify someone as a witch. So during the Salem witch trials, Tituba, in her culture, she believed that urine could be a protectant. So she literally baked urine into a cake for the girls to eat at the trial. She brought it into court so the girls could have a bite of urine cake to protect them so that they would not be found out or accused, wrongly accused, of being witches. I don't know if it worked, but that's the story. In 1655, urine's back in the literature, except this time it's not for a favorable reason. At this point, Thomas Bryan writes his book, The Piss Prophets. He about destroys the science because he points out just all the shenanigans that are going on and how urine is being misused. And instead of being revered physicians, suddenly people that relied on urine testing were derogatorily referred to as piss prophets, piss procrastinators, urinarians, and piss mongers. Not a very flattering thing to call your doctor. As anything is misused, it's going to fall out of favor. You will have those individuals that are true uh, to um, healthcare or medicine at the time standing up and saying, you're misusing this. Um, and so it did fall out of favor. And then the birth of not only the microscope, but also of chemical testing. You had those individuals with that inquisitive mind that why is this person's urine this color uh, compared to someone else's? Why does it smell differently? And so they were starting to do chemical tests. And as there was more concrete scientific study of urine, it started slowly to, um, again, gain validity in, in the healthcare world. How did urine recover from this hit to its reputation to become a modern tool of healthcare today? Where was modern urinalysis started, and how did it become such a powerful tool in a doctor's bag? Find out in our next episodes of Urine, a liquid lens into your health. That's an old wives' tale. <laughs> it's not possible to detect a witch. No, Bill, so why did people think they could detect? Like, what were they looking for? Power. No, in the urine. Powerful <laughs> urine? <laughs> <laughs> what were they looking for in the urine, do you know? I don't okay. really have any idea of what would be in a witch's urine. <laughs> Eye of Newt, maybe. <laughs>